Hi everyone, Professor Stefero here, and today's screencast is on the nucleus and the ribosomes. Uh, the nucleus was the first organelle to be discovered, mostly because it was large enough to be seen under the light microscope. And here we see several examples of eukaryotic cells with their nucleus. The first up at the top here are these white blood cells. And white blood cells are unusual in that they have multi-shaped nuclei. These are very lobed in appearance. This one over here is very, very large, takes up most of the volume of the cell. And that's because these cells generally are going to produce a lot of protein uh, inside, of, inside the cells. Uh, but most of the time when we look at cells, the nuclei looks very much like the ones that we're going to look at here next. This would be the onion root, and we can see its nucleus here. Down we go to the octopus-like neuron with its nucleus. Then over here we've got the small nucleus of fat cells, followed by some plant cells with their nucleus. This would be onion epidermis. Then coming up to the top here, we see some epithelial cells in the kidney. So this would be the nucleus here with the cell. And then finally, a smear of some cheek cells, the lining of your mouth. And these would be some of the cells scraped off of that lining. And we can see the nucleus here inside of that cell. So the nucleus is the control center of the cell. It controls the cell's activities. And here in the generalized uh, animal cell, we can see the nucleus as a spherical organelle containing two main components, chromatin and the nucleolus. Chromatin is this dispersed stringy material that you see within the nucleus. It is a less coiled form of DNA. When this chromatin coils up into bodies, we call those bodies chromosomes. But when the cell is not dividing, we usually don't see chromosomes. And so the chromatin is the form of DNA that we see in the nucleus. And then the nucleolus is this darker, dense area here within the nucleus. And this dense region is the site for making ribosomes. The way the nucleus controls cell activities is to synthesize proteins. In the electron micrograph that we see of this particular nucleus shows us the nucleolus. Then we can see the chromatin. And then we can see this boundary as well. And this two-layer boundary of the nucleus is called the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope contains pores. And these pores allow things like ribosomes and messenger RNA to pass from inside of the nucleus through these pores and into the cell cytoplasm. Here we see this nuclear envelope attaching itself to two important cell structures, the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The roughness is brought about by those ribosomes made in the nucleus being attached to the surface of this structure while it's making proteins. So ribosomes, we can see those here again. This is another picture of the ER. The ER would be the stripes that we see here in the electron micrograph, and then the brownish pebble-looking structures are the representations of ribosomes. And so these are going to be involved in protein synthesis. Cells must synthesize a large amount of protein, and those that make a lot of protein will have large numbers of ribosomes inside of their cells. Uh, ribosomes need to uh, read messenger RNA to make that protein. And here we can see the symbol that we use for a ribosome. We describe it as two subunits, the large subunit and the small. And in this depiction, the pink ribbon is the messenger RNA. And that is being read, in a sense, by the ribosome. 
and the ribosome is helping to produce the polypeptide or protein that we see here by the purple balls. The other thing we can see here from the photograph is that while some ribosomes are attached to that endoplasmic reticulum, we call it rough ER, others are free and suspended in the cytoplasm. Uh, typically these are going to be the uh, ribosomes that are involved in making proteins that are going to stay within the cytoplasm while bound ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum will be producing proteins that will be dispersed outside of the cell. So that's it for the ribosomes and the nucleus. See you soon.